says in parentheses. Don't be shocked when your history book mentions me. I will lay down my life if it sets us free eventually. Right now in our country, there are a lot of folks who are rightly feeling a great sense of distrust in their government and its institutions and leaders. And one of the most important ingredients in trust is truth. But there's a funny thing about truth. Speaking truth can often make people quite uncomfortable. And for those of us who speak, you know what I'm talking about. And for those of us who are used to speaking behind a microphone and often behind a podium, there is an incentive that when we speak, we will make everyone feel happy. We will make everyone feel lovely. We will sprinkle lovely dust all over the room and people will applaud and job will have been done. Well, speaking truth doesn't always accomplish that goal. But there's another thing about speaking truth. Yes, people may walk away from that conversation thinking, you know, I didn't particularly like what I had to hear. But they will also walk away from that conversation knowing it was an honest conversation. So let's speak some truth. If Charlottesville didn't make it clear, if the Tree of Life Synagogue did not make it clear, racism, anti-Semitism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, Islamophobia, these things are real in our country. They are born out of hate, which has received new fuel over the last two years, and we must collectively speak out and stand up against it wherever it occurs and call it for what it is, and call it for what it is, And anyone who is ever the subject of that hate should never be made to fight alone. <laughs> Let's speak truth. We are a society that pretends to care about education, but not so much the education of other people's children. So let's talk about our teachers then and understand that there are two groups of people who are raising our children. Parents, often with grandparents and aunties and uncles, and teachers. But we are not paying our teachers their value. Teachers in our country. Teachers in our country, on average, are receiving 10% less in salary than similarly educated college graduates. So here is what I'm proposing. What I am proposing is what will be the first in our nation ever federal investment in closing that teacher pay gap. And in Iowa, that teacher pay gap is $12,200 a year. Let's speak truth. <laughs> Access to health care should not be a privilege just for those who can afford it. It should be a right for which all can engage and enjoy. And it is immoral. It is immoral to perpetuate a system where people are denied access to health care because of how much money they have in their pocket. Let's speak truth. And that is why I am supporting the goal of Medicare for all. In particular, in this moment in time when there are so many powerful forces out there, that are trying to sow hate and division among us. I believe this is a truth that we should not only speak, but that we should know in our hearts and in our souls. And that truth is this. The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. Let's speak that truth. Let's speak that truth. 
Let's know that truth. And so, as we march toward 2020, I believe we must hold on to that and not buy this stuff they're trying to sell. When they're trying to divide us as a nation, when people are trying to say, oh, you got to talk a certain way with people in the Midwest than you do with people in the South and people in the West. Let's not buy that stuff. Let's not buy it. And in order to be relevant, I believe it is critically important that especially now that we listen as much, if not more, than we talk. And for that reason, I would love to hear from everybody here and, um, and, and engage in a conversation. So if we can take some questions, that'd be great. I served for 40 years in the Iowa City Community School District mm. as an administrator, as a teacher. And I guess my question is, as I read my AARP magazine, mm -hmm. I, I see comments that make me uncomfortable in terms of the monies allocated to seniors, senior citizens yeah. to continue to be able to at least survive. Yeah. What would be your thinking yeah. on how to protect most of the money that we already paid into That's Social right. Security? That's right. For the seniors. That's right. That's great. So here's my feeling about it. We have to keep our promise to you and everyone else who worked hard, who played by the rules, and we made a promise that at the end of that process, you would be able to retire with dignity with the money you put into a system and also with the investment that you placed in your country, that your country is responsible for reinvesting in you. And so I feel very strongly about that. But let's talk specifically about one of the reasons, frankly, that I'm, that I'm supportive of, of Medicare for All as a, as a policy is one of the biggest impediments, especially for our seniors, but for everyone, um, to have access to health care is, is the cost of health care and specifically the cost of prescription drugs. And we've got to recognize the role the pharmaceutical companies are playing in that, which is the pivotal role because their business model is about profit over public health. In America right now, one in four diabetes patients cannot afford their insulin. And so part of what I think about, when I think about what we need to do to, to, to make your years of, of retirement better, is we've got to bring down the cost of prescription drugs. And that is gonna have to be about negotiating against those drug companies and calling out where we see the abuses that they're engaged in. And I've been working all my life. Mm -hmm. And then I started McDonald's uh, sometime in 2014. I've been there for five long years. First time they're paying me like $8. I still get $8 and 40 some cents an hour. Then they cut my hours down to one day a week because right now I'm, I, I still will be 65 years old next month. I'm barely making it. My rent is $550 a month and my light bill around me $279 every month because I'm going to some things and some tribal tribulations. It's time for us to wake up and get the country together. We all need to work together and live like people and try to get something going for ourselves. Yep. That's why I don't understand because I really Appreciate it that I came to this rally tonight so I could say what's going on tonight, what I've been going down. Yeah, no, I appreciate you speaking up. The minimum is $7.25 an hour. You know what that, that is a year? $15,000 a year. $7.25 an hour is $15,000 a year. I don't know anybody who can, in our country, given the cost of living, get by without work in two or three jobs. And so we've got to do a better job when it comes to minimum wage and basically having wages match the cost of living in our country. In our country today, for almost half of American families, they are a $400 unexpected expense away from complete upheaval. $400. That could be the car breaking down, that could be a hospital bill you didn't see coming, $400. In America today, in 99% of the counties in our country, if you are a minimum wage worker working full time, you cannot afford market rate for a one bedroom apartment. 
in America today, in Iowa City. These are the realities of America today. And you know what galls me? When supposed leaders walk around talking about the economy is great, the economy is great, it's doing great. And then you ask, well, how so exactly? How are you measuring the greatness of this economy of yours? And they'll point to the stock market. Well, that's fine if you own stocks. <laughs> then you might ask, well, how else are you measuring the greatness of this economy that you talk about? And they'll talk about the unemployment numbers. Well, I don't have to tell the folks in this room what I hear all across our country. People are working. They're working two and three jobs to get through the month and pay the bills. And as far as I'm concerned, in our America, you should only have to work one job to be able to pay the bills and have a decent quality of living. <laughs>